increasingly complex technology is enabling us to find out an awe-inspiring amount of information about our long-lost ancestors, even down to fine minutiae of their everyday lives. Here is what some of these astounding finds have revealed to us about three ancient humans, one rumoured to carry a sinister curse, while another imparts a prophetic message for the future. Otzi, famous for bearing the world's oldest tattoos, the mummy of an ancient ice-dwelling hunter, has also been rumoured to carry a mysterious curse. The 5,300-year-old Neolithic mummy, now named Otzi, was discovered by a hiking German couple in 1991 in a Melton glacier in the Otzkel Alps in South Tyrol, Italy. Citing what they thought was a bit of brown rubbish, the hikers were shocked to find it was the head and shoulders of a man lying face down on the flat rock in ice and meltwater. Finally extracted and taken to the Institute of Forensic Medicine in Innsbruck, the mummy of the 45-year-old man has shown some surprisingly modern characteristics and mysteries. Otzi's body is covered with over 50 tattoos which have been created by making fine incisions into the skin, informations of lines and crosses, and then rubbing in charcoal. It is believed that the cuts were probably made as part of a pain relieving treatment, particularly as the tattooed areas perfectly match skin acupuncture lines. Prior to the discovery of Otzi, it was thought that the practice of acupuncture was not developed until 2000 years later in Asia. Otzi was missing a 12th pair of ribs, a highly unusual anatomical anomaly. He suffered from some very modern maladies, such as worn inflamed joints, gallbladder stones and hardened arteries due to his meat-rich diet. He was also found to carry a gene for coronary heart disease risk and was lactose intolerant as were most of our Neolithic ancestors prior to the domestication of cattle. He is thought to have belonged to a European genetic group and also to have been infertile. In fact, 19 living male relatives of Otzi have been traced all of the men have not been informed of this link. The brown-eyed, bearded man had a gap between his front teeth and a weathered face from spending many hours trekking in the mountains. He measured about 5 foot 3 inches in height and weighed 110 pounds. He was carrying essential equipment, the most important item of which being a copper-bladed axe, which tests have proven could have felled a yew tree in 35 minutes. Other possessions of Otzi's were found with obvious usefulness, such as his bearskin cap, leather and hide offcuts, grasses and string. However, despite 20 years of intensive research, the purpose of a stone disc he was carrying was a complete mystery. Fashioned from white dolomite marble, the disc has a hole in the middle through which a leather strip was threaded. Nine twisted high thongs were knotted to a loop in this strip. Otzi's social status also remains a mystery, although theories have variously included as having been a shaman, a mineral prospector, or even someone banished from his community. It is believed he lost his life in spring or summer. He is believed to have fallen in a tough personal conflict, which also involved hand-to-hand -hand struggle. Recent x-rays found a flint arrowhead lodged in his left shoulder and evidence of a blow to the head. He sought to have been resting when it was taken by surprise. Pieces of skin, muscle fibers, hair, and a fingernail were also found, but the most astonishing forensic find has been an insight into how Otzi's voice sounded. By using CT scans of the Neolithic man's vocal tract, Italian scientists have been able to approximate the way he pronounced his vowels. The research team used refined software that enabled them to firstly reposition the mummy whose torso was twisted in a defensive posture and reconstructed the bone around his tongue. They then applied mathematical models and technology to recreate the throaty articulation produced by Otzi's virtual vocal tract. <coughs> Claims of a curse such as the eerie legend attached to Tutankhamun's burial site have begun to circulate about Otzi. 
Unfortunately, seven people have met their end within the two years after German hiker Helmut Simon and his wife Erika discovered the frozen remains in 1991. The seven individuals who passed all participated either in the retrieval of the mummy or in the scientific investigation. One of the seven was Helmut Simon, who went missing in strange circumstances. He embarked on a mountain tour in the Alps on 15th of October 2004, but did not return. A search party was dispatched to look for Simon, but failed to locate him, and mountain rescue officials ultimately held out little hope for his safe rescue. Tragically, his body was found trapped in ice in 2004, in some ways echoing the fate of the man who had made him famous. Chewing Gum Girl Imagine having your whole identity extrapolated from a single piece of your gum. Over 5,700 years ago, a girl finished with a wad of chewing gum at Siltholm, which has since become an archaeological site in Denmark. The chewing gum was found to be made of birch bark pitch, which was often chewed by the ancients before used as a kind of glue in constructing stone and wood tools. It was also used as an antiseptic for dental and medical problems. Researchers analysed the gum and reported in the Nature Communications Journal that amazingly, they were able to sequence a full genome from the DNA in the gum. In the absence of any biological remains at the site, for the first time, scientists were able to determine the cultural heritage, appearance, and even the most recent meal of the girl without using any ancient bones or teeth. No human remains have ever been found at the silt home dig, but the DNA in the gum was so well preserved that we now have a snapshot of this girl's life. The child was found to have black hair, blue eyes and dark skin, and was more closely related to hunter-gatherers from Western Europe than to Neolithic farmers who had more recently migrated to the area. She also left evidence of her most recent meal in the gum. She'd been eating hazelnuts and mallard duck, but her oral microbiome also indicated that her life could have been difficult due to a general unwellness. She had the Epstein-Barr virus and probably had suffered from mononucleosis during her life. Wads of ancient gum found at archaeological sites are now being used frequently to obtain genetic sequences for an insight into ancient toolmakers who are both male and female and some as young as five years old. The Singing Mummy An ancient Egyptian priest called Nesiamun was in life a singer and chanter at the Karnak Temple in Thebes. His mummy was sealed into a coffin with an inscription that described him as Nesiamun, true of voice. Hieroglyphs decorating his sarcophagus expect his wish for his beautiful voice to continue into perpetuity. Nesiamun's mummy was first unwrapped in 1854, and it was then analysed to reveal that it was in his 50s when his life ended. 3,000 years after the seaman's passing, his mummy was taken from the Leeds City Museum to a hospital where it was repeatedly CT scanned by speech scientists from Royal Holloway University of London. Usually mummies such as his have been reduced to mid bones by the passing of time, with all the soft tissue long degraded. However, the seaman's body had been so well preserved by the mummification process that an accurate 3D printed replica of his throat and larynx was able to be reconstructed. This was able to be linked up to an electronic larynx and loudspeaker with the intention of simulating the priest's voice. Using the artificial larynx and computer software, the researchers obtained a short vowel-like sound, which they said indicated that the seaman's voice would be lighter and higher pitched than a typical modern man's. Future development of the vocal tract reconstruction is planned, whereby it is flexible enough to move around and produce a wide variety of sounds and even words. The strangely futuristic aspect of this undertaking came when the research team was astonished to find out that inscribed in Nesimian's sarcophagus 
was his desire to be able to speak and move in the afterlife as he had while he was alive. The research team's audio recording is the first step in enabling this to happen, in fulfillment of his wish.